We're in the midst of an epidemic of endocrine-related diseases in the United States, but all across the world. You're carrying probably more than a thousand compounds in your urine that were not in the urine of your grandparents. We know some of these compounds are bioactive at the concentrations that they can be found in your urine. We actually have compounds that will begin feminizing fish at one part per trillion. Over the last several decades, we've transitioned from a world that dominated by infectious diseases that are communicable, to one of a world dominated by non-communicable diseases, many of which are related to misbehaviors of the endocrine system, the hormone system. Things like type two diabetes, obesity, prostate cancer, breast cancer, a wide range of these that are now epidemics, not just in the developed world, they're epidemics worldwide and they're growing more and more. And this science, the field I work in, is revealing strong evidence that chemicals are contributing to the burden of those diseases. Endocrine disrupting chemicals impact fertility and lower fertility results in longer time to pregnancy. We know that we're in the midst of, no, of a dual epidemic of obesity and diabetes. The frequency of testicular cancer increased 30% between 1970 and 2000. Certain male reproductive defects have increased by 30 or even 60%. For women, endometriosis and fibroids affect a substantial percentage of women and infertility is increasing such that the use of assisted reproductive technologies has skyrocketed. To me, the alarming part is that so much of what we're seeing are sublethal. So things like learning disabilities, lack of reproductive ability, that it may take many years for that to show up as a real human population effect. But it, it, I think in many ways it is affecting our population not maybe as mortality, but as other issues. DS was an estrogenic compound that was a pharmaceutical that, were given, that was given to women when they were pregnant, um, you know, as, as late as the 1960s or so. And it didn't impact the pregnant women, but the daughters then had uh, deformed uteri and vaginal cancers and increased likelihood of breast cancer. Now the difficulty of knowing that you're getting a cancer 30 years from now from something that you were exposed to in utero. That's hard to prove. What happens to a developing fetus is that it can be set off on the wrong course by chemical exposures. And that course can by itself lead it to the wrong place, or it can set the fetus up for exposures later in life to which it would not normally be sensitive. We found out that Maternal exposures to a very common class of chemicals called phthalates are associated and possibly causally related to the changes in a placental hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin. And this hormone is particularly important because it's well known to be uh, essential to normal pregnancy maintenance and to the development of the fetus. What happens to humans and frogs and rodents is that certain chemicals that can lower testosterone, which the baby needs, which the male needs to become male typical, if those chemicals are there and lowering the mother's testosterone and the fetal testosterone, then the development of the male genitals is not what it should be. And it is in fact what we call under masculinized. In my research, in my lab, we study the effects of an endocrine disruptor called tributyltin which contaminates vinyl plastics on obesity. The prevailing medical explanation for obesity is you eat too much and you exercise too little. And of course that has an important role. I wouldn't say that you can get fat by breathing the air. You obviously have to consume calories and you have to consume more than you burn. But what our work says is that different people have different responses to the diet. So mice that we've exposed to tributyl tin the offspring of those mice down through four generations respond differently to calories. They get fat on a normal diet. When you make the diet higher in fat, they get obese rapidly. They resist losing that fat when you fast them, which is what I call the dieter's lament, right? I eat the same amount as Mark does and I get fat and he doesn't. And I diet and I still don't lose the weight. That's exactly what happens to our mice. And the only difference between those mice and the normal mice 
is that their great-great-grandmothers were exposed to tributyl tin when they were pregnant. So there's sort of these inherent risk factors that I think make people, some people more susceptible to the diseases that might ensue rather than others. And being aware, I think, of those susceptibilities and how you personally might be at risk can help you identify if you really need to be more and more concerned. And I think taking any step possible to reduce your exposure is a healthy choice. Because a lot of what we don't know about those low, low exposures too is how they might interact with each other. Right, so we've just scratched the surface with our understanding of endocrine disruptors in, in humans. So to the EPA, an endocrine disruptor disrupts the estrogen, testosterone, or thyroid hormone pathways. There are 48 pathways in the body that are regulated by those kinds of hormones, by receptors that work in the same way as those do. There are a thousand other signaling systems that are regulated by molecules that either look like hormones or have the ability to carry signals from one cell to another. Every single one of those can be disrupted by chemicals that look similar to the hormones in the receptors. And no one is studying those. So what little we know suggests that endocrine disrupting chemicals are a substantial contributor to disease and disability, but the costs, even under the most scrutinized and careful circumstances or conservative circumstances, are extremely large. So far as the costs are not fully accounted for, they speak to a fact that we are overproducing many chemicals and using them without full regard of the consequences for society. And ultimately, the goal here is to rebalance that.